So off out while camping at no nah, 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 nah. we were Look I'm, not, I'm not saying where I'm at, I'm saying in the Highlands of Scotland. Yeah. So we're off out while camping in the Scottish Highlands. We have an overflowing loch. We've got a clown who will be blowing up balloons later on. Um, we have a have I already said mountainous landscape? God damn my working memory is shocking. Right, um you're gonna have to Right, I don't, I don't want to like point to a clown. That's that's rude, man. I don't think this guy's a d <laughs> right. So we're off out while camping in the Scottish Highlands. We have a an it's an overflowing log. So off while camping in the Scottish Highlands, we've got an overflowing log. We have some mountainous landscape, and I'm off out camping with a clown and another YouTuber. So on this little adventure, I'm off out with Nikki. I want to say hi. Hi. The microphone's here. And <laughs> no, you don't, you don't wave at the microphone, you say hello to the microphone. And you've got guys up there just arrived. And we've also bumped into another YouTuber, one man and her dog, Sandy. Sandy's just over to the other side as well. Hopefully we can pick this up. As you can see, it's still a bit gusty. And oh, that was very rude from the wind. So we're off out at Loch Turret. You'd have seen this from a previous video with fun-sized earthling, Ur Mari. However, the area is rather flooded. We actually camped over there. And as you can see, the water has risen by around one or two meters. But that's previously a grass area. We would have a fire down there, but completely flooded. We're expecting more rainfall tonight, so hopefully it doesn't rise any further. But we're off at Loch Turret which is known for Ben Honsey, or Ben Johnsey, or however you'd like to pronounce it. One of the Monroes in Scotland. You can just about see a part of it in the distance there. It's a good wee scramble at the end. But you've got Ben Honsey there. Um, it's known for a few other corbets as well. So it's a great area, rich, rich in walking spots and um, little trails. It's just up from the town of Creef. We're only about a 10 minute drive from Creef. And to give you an idea where Creef is, for those who live overseas, it's about an hour and 15 minutes drive north of Glasgow. And there's another little city, a little city called Perth, which is about 40 minutes east. But I like Loch Turret. And Gaz hasn't been here before. Gaz would, it was Gaz's suggestion to come here. And I'm like, really Gaz, I've been here before. But you know what, Gaz, you deserve it because you're my number one man in my life. Don't you know it? He's not even paying attention. So, I don't like to start on me, so. <laughs> Got a new tent this week. As you can see, it's effectively the Vango Banshee on steroids. It's like the Vango Banshee's been hitting the gym. It's got an extra pole. It's like a Banshee, it's got two poles, one in the middle, one in the end. This one has an additional pole at the end. These ones are equal in length but thankfully it's colour coded so you know where the poles go, blue and red. But I'm off out in the Van Gogh Star, Star Ave uh, 200 
as you can see it's a classic little wild camping tunnel tent so when the this end the back end is pitched into the tent it should handle wind relatively well it's got plenty of guy out points as well so an extra pole extra guy out points i'd be quite comfortable in taking this out in 60 miles per hour winds assuming we're pitched on flat ground and again the back end of the tent is getting hit with the wind right now the winds come from that direction so the main body is getting hit with the winds but it's performing pretty well so far uh, it's got a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head so that would more than do the job in scottish weather it's a two person tent cozy enough two person tent and it's not got ideal headroom i mean when i'm sitting in it my head's touching the roof but i don't mind that i quite like these low lying um, tents nice and cozy um, what else have we got it's got three vestibules you've got this one here and it's also got two little vestibules on either end you can zip the doors down partially so it's like extra ventilation or you can open them up fully so it's super extra ventilation and again if the wind say coming from that end driving wind and driving rain going in that direction you can open up that little bottom end there and you can cook in the little vestibule as it also comes with like a little tarp region as well it's got three pockets it's got a lantern hanging point and it's also got the TBS detention band system which gives the tent extra strength and strong winds but it's cosy enough I've got my you can get two mats in here no bother and at the bottom of the tent or the top of the tent depends which way you're sleeping you can get two backpacks in there as well now tonight's sleeping system temperatures we're expecting to get down to about two celsius grief we're expecting about four celsius at night but we're higher up we're around 400 meters above sea level so we're expecting temperatures to drop a little but you're certainly feeling the wind chill up here right now um, so i'm going for my winter setup i've got the doubter exosphere minus 10 with me comfort on that's minus four limit minus 10 and i've got the xped downmat 5m our value and that's 3.8 so again that should take me down to about minus 10 as well and i've also got a well the big agnes for the degree um close cell phone map nikki's got with her the van gogh helix which is also a two-person tent it's got a hydrostatic head of 5000 millimeters and it comes with the van gogh power light 701 t6 alloy poles which are the same ones you would find on the van gogh starav which is interesting because this is a very recent tent made by van gogh and unlike the F10 which has the Yunnan Eco alloy poles which I believe are stronger and more versatile instead of going for the Yunnan poles they've also went for the Perlite ones the ones you'd find on this tent and many other Van Gogh tents now it is a tunnel tent but it is interesting in the wind it is very difficult to put up in the wind and the poles aren't attached to the outer as well so you're really relying on the tautness of the fly sheet to keep everything in place but there's only four guy out points and really you want more than that the vestibule comes with a little ground sheet it's a small vestibule well it's hard to tell we're on uneven ground so we haven't been able to get either tent nice and taut but as you can see from the inside the inner also leans down um, which can be quite annoying if it's hitting the top of your face so you've got no option but to sleep at the door of the tent which you really should be doing with these tents but it's a very low lying inner and as you can see spacious enough two person tent you've got a pocket on either end you've got two little pockets up here as well and a lantern hanging point now Nikki's sleeping system she's went for the Robins closed cell foam mat the Firmarest Neowear X Lite, the three quarter version, which is smart, you don't really need the bottom three quarters, so you don't really need the bottom quarters because it's really your core that's heating the mat up. Your legs, all you have to do is just put a, say for example, your backpack at the bottom to keep your legs off the ground and job done. So I, I, I mean, it's something that I've been looking to get into, three quarter mats, because they're more lightweight and more compact. She's got with her a rabbit bivy bag, 
does the job, traps out a little bit extra heat, helps the ambient temperature. And she's also got the Rabascent 700, which has a comfort rating of minus five. So with the Femarest New Air X Lite, which has got a R value of 4.2, and a sleeping bag with a comfort rating of minus five, Nikki's also more than sorted for the evening. How has Nikki found the tent? Have you had it out in strong winds or rain, rain before? Out in rain. How has it performed? Oh, you said it was leaking? I'm not sure. You're yeah. not sure? Second hand tent. This is an old tent. Yep. Mm. Keep an eye on it. So <laughs> things are not looking great for this <laughs> uh, tent <laughs> on this little mini run rundown slash review. How have you found the Rabba Scent 700 though? Nice and warm. Lovely, lovely, lovely sleeping bag. Nice lovely and sleeping bag and nice and warm. So, jackpot and gas has just arrived, and I think gas is shitting me. Aye, here we go. So guys, what tent have you got with you? This is the Wild Country Helm 1 from Terra Nova. One of my favourite tents, free season. However, I use it a lot in the winter. And I would still say it's this kind of winter, really. March. I don't know. Is this, is this spring? Well, on a technicality, I think... Um, see, four season tents, mm -hmm. they're aimed at, like, again, alpine condi yeah, conditions. Yeah. Um, it's a... It's a all season in the UK, but I think I would describe this as a free season tent. It is, it is described as a free season tent, I first really like it. I really like it, it's a good tent, really, really good. But you've had it out in Storm Kira? Storm Kira, unintentionally. Well, it, it just came up early. Unintentionally? <laughs> well, I mean, the weather forecast was wrong. That was it, as simple as that. What do you mean the weather forecast was wrong? It was, a, it was an amber warning for wind and rain. The next day, not during the night. I think it was me and Valtteri had arguing on Wait, how, what do you mean? I mean, you you still had strong winds till about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but the winds came earlier. They were meant to come like in the afternoon, but it came in the morning. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, really. I can't really remember because oh, I was in a sheltered the spot. Done, the tent done the job. It did the job. It done the job. There's a video just, on it. There's a video on it. Just done the job, like. But, but done the job, that's the main thing. But was that trip to maybe get the hell of our solo because I thought... That's not going to do the job on a Monroe on a windy day. It would probably do that job on the one occasion, but I wouldn't make I wouldn't yeah. make it a habit taking this out in storms like uh, Kira winds with excess of seventy you miles per hour wind. When nah. But when you're doing the trips like the mean you do on the Monroe, you're three or four hours from the car sometimes. You don't want your tent feeling in the middle of the night when you're that far from your car. This tent is great for this sort of camping. I've kept it for that reason. I just really like it. I really, I do like the Terra Nova tent, so they're really, really well made. No issues in the heavy rain? No issues in the heavy rain. My most viewed video was in this tent. Oh, when I mean, you went solo camping? Yeah, in the heavy in rain. the Pentlands, eh? And it done well. So if I do it in heavy rain, strong winds, calm weather, freezing cold temperatures, I love the tent. It's a really, really good tent. I've got nothing bad really to say it's about a, it. It's a good yeah. free, season, free season tent and again free season is really UK all year round. Um, so that's good, they got a good wee vestibule. So what's the sleeping system for the evening? What have I brought? Femarest Neo Air X Firm, you'll see that Matt, top probably be made. What's the R value again, that 7.2? <laughs> Femarest Hyperion Summer Sleeping Bag, comfort rating 0 degrees. Summer. Yeah. Comfort zero degrees. But as I've said, it can summer. go down to zero degrees on the Munros in the summer. So it does make sense to have it. And mm -hmm. it still only weighs 500 grams, so you can't really go wrong. My two pillows, as always, uh, I can't remember what they are, but you'll probably do a video of them anyway. I'll do a video of them. Uh, While you're saying that, I'll be doing a Yeah, that's a clip. I've got, I've got a new reflective mat. What I've done is I cut my old one up and I use it as a sit mat. I'll get it out. That's what I've done with mine down there. This is it here. Very, very light, eh? I mean, can't go wrong with that. Is that the one that's more geared towards car windows than Basically. actual? Ah, right. Basically, I but Cool. Thank you. <laughs> this little cutie is Lexi. There you go, hen. Bumped into Uro Sandy from One Man oh, and yeah. her dog. Hello. <laughs> Spoken to that gentleman for years and we just randomly bumped into each other. He's got with him the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. Roomy tent. 
two good vestibules, symmetrical vestibules. Oh, she's going to start barking. Do you want that? Go and get it. Good grief, wasn't expecting to do this in the video. And he's set up, he's got a cool cell phone mat for the dog. The sleeping bag's the Mountain Warehouse Microlite 700. He feels a little chilly in that, so he's got the C to Summit Femalite reactor, which adds an extra 8 Celsius. And he's also got the Mountain Equipment self inflating sleeping mat. But, great little tent, phenomenal headroom, even at the edges. Can't wait to start using that again. And this is our company for the evening. We're just about to get the fire on the go as well. Gaz has brought his little portable fire pit. And we're going to sit it in this little corner here. So we're using Gazi's little portable fire pit and these are ideal in these conditions because the ground's nice and damp so even if a spark does fly off the fire pit the ground's nice and damp so it'll just you know put the spark out the problem is don't use these in sustained dry weather because the dry grass just goes up like that but when nice and damp conditions there's nowhere else to have a fire these little portable fire pits on the way forward, I mean, they're only, what, £15 on Amazon or Wish, I believe the other websites cost. And guys, how much do they weigh? Is it about 500, 600 grams? I've never weighed it. I've never really looked into it, but... I don't think it's a kilogram. It's about 500, 600 grams. Yeah. So you get about 500 grams, 600 grams, £15, nice and compact, and good for the environment. And they can have big fires on them. You can get about... I create a wall using four bits of wood and then in the middle I'll put a fire log plus two other bits of wood so you can get a big toasty fire pit on them as well, very reliable. If you're having big fires like that, I reckon you can get about eight uses out of them but with a more, a smaller, more controllable fire, probably that little bit longer but they do have a short lifespan. Up pretty well. right. nice. Just goes up like that. So that's another benefit of this little portable fire pit. You can dry your socks out just around the edges of the fire. You can dry your socks, your boots, or your gloves. Like that little hand bell. So it's about 10 o'clock in the evening and that's us retreated to the tents as the rain has arrived a couple of hours ready. We just sat around the fire, listened to some music, we bumped into Sandy, he was good company as well. But we just sat around the fire, chatted away and now it's bedtime, well not bedtime, we're going to stay up and have a few glasses of wine I believe. And then head to bed the next couple of hours, but it's been a cracking little camp so far. It's not been too cold, the wind it did die down, which was a lifesaver. But the fire as well was also a bit of a lifesaver. So hopefully we can get some heavy rainfall, so I can add that into the video as well. A lot of people like the rain hitting off the tent, so I might just get some extended rain hitting off the tent clips, rather than the usual 8 seconds. So hope you guys are enjoying, thanks. Check this out, a little UCO candle lantern, nice and cosy.
So what a sleep that was last night. We ended up going to sleep around 12 o'clock at night and we both took that sleep aid pill that I was recommending in the previous videos and Nikki found it to be exceptionally helpful as well. Nikki struggles to sleep when she's out camping too but she took that sleep aid pill and she said it knocked her out and then she had a good deep sleep while camping. So it was a good sleep, it was a warm sleep, even I had a warm sleep, Nikki had a warm sleep and Gaz had a warm sleep. Now the weather was unexpected, um, apparently it was light rain between 12 and 6 a.m. in the morning the forecast was but that certainly wasn't the case we had some strong winds and we had heavy rainfall throughout it's now about nine o'clock in the morning and it's still raining so what we're going to do is have a cup of tea and then pack up but we'll still get more shots of the general area now that it's the cloud levels reduced so it's giving off a nice eerie ambient feeling it is still absolutely wild out there, the wind's picked up again and the rain is absolutely bouncing really heavy so that's us packing up and heading home. If you really enjoyed the content guys as usual I'd appreciate it if you smashed the like button, subscribe to the channel and dropped a little comment. So take care y'all and I'll see you in the next adventure.